All right, how's it going, everybody? This is Aaron with Thrive Outdoor Solutions, and today we are going to be going over getting your Hunter X2 controller connected to the internet uh, and using an application uh, called HydraWise. So let's get after it. All right, so the most common complaint with this was that one, they changed the uh, the app interface on how it works. And so we've gotten a couple of requests through our videos as well as our customers as well uh, who have been having issues uh, with just kind of getting acclimated with the new application. Nothing to worry, um, just a couple of things that you'll need. Obviously, the Hunter X2 controller. Uh, you will also need the... Uh, HydraWise uh, Hunter X2 Wi-Fi wand, be able to get that connected, uh, and then you'll also need to download the application HydraWise, H-Y-D-R-A-W-I-S-E, and that will get you uh, in there. You'll need to create an account uh, using an email and a password, and then you will be able to open that application, and it'll take you to this screen here uh, where you can then run the setup wizard. Uh, one other thing that you'll need uh, for folks that are switching over from the uh, the older version to the newer version is some patience. Um, it'll it'll help you out. Uh, again, it's it's pretty much a lot of the same. Um, it's just getting used to the uh, the newer interface. Uh, but there's a lot of good that comes with this newer application that the other application did not have. So um, it's 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 good that they're they're switching things up and trying to you know keep up with the times and and give you a a little bit easier product to work with. And I think they did that with this with this app. So. Um, first things first um, is running the setup wizard. So you're going to hit run setup wizard there. And once that's uh, done, it'll take you over to this screen. And again, you can go through and hit let's get started. Uh, you'll be able to name your controller. Uh, we, of course, in this case, named our controller Thrive Outdoor Solutions. But you can name it whatever you'd like to. Um, not really a preference on that. You can name it just controller. Uh, you can name it your residence really whatever you'd like to name, uh, you're more more than welcome to do so. Um, from there, what you're going to do is you're going to hit continue, and it'll take you over to this screen. Now, what this is going to do is have you scan the back of your uh, Wi-Fi wand here, which you'll see there's a, a um, barcode and a, uh, a little serial number there. I think it's about 10 digits. Um, but that will give you the uh, the options uh, to be able to uh, link your controller uh, over to the uh, the Wi-Fi wand and then allow for you to connect it to the Internet. So the way that they've done this now, it's a lot easier than what it used to be. Usually you had to uh, go in there, you had to hit right here and type it all in. And then, of course, there was a confusion of, is it supposed to be capital or not, capitalized letters. I don't think there was any difference, but just the monotony of pushing in each individual letter and button or number uh, was just kind of um, annoying at that time. But what they've done now is you see where it says scan serial number, scan that there, and you're just going to basically pick up your phone, go right over top of it, and there you go. So it's a pretty quick process now. And again, it takes away you having to go through and type everything yourself. So it's kind of a nice little feature. Um, from there, what you're going to do is you're going to hit continue. And we'll move over to connecting it to the Wi-Fi. Now, before you go over to the next uh, screen, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take this Wi-Fi wand and you're going to want to plug it in to your controller. Now, when your controller is you know, just kind of sitting on the wall with no Wi-Fi uh, added to it. It's going to have this little guy plugged into the side here, okay? All you're going to do is take that out. You're going to remove it. You can throw it away. Uh, you can do whatever you like to, really. Uh, you can chunk it in there. I like to leave it in this compartment here uh, with my wires just in case I ever want to get rid of the Wi-Fi option. I uh, have that ability to be able to close it back up. So that's a good choice if you wanted to save that. Um, but what you'll notice is that the serial number on this guy is going to have to be facing the wall, okay? And you're just going to slide the wand right into the controller, seat it all the way, and you'll see that the controller will then start to recognize that there is a wand installed. It'll go, hello, launch phone app, or push side button. And once that's there, you are good to continue 
once you're reading that on the LCD, you're going to continue that uh, on connecting it to the Wi-Fi. So you're going to go through. Now, personally, I like to use the uh, Bluetooth option. I've just found it to be a lot easier when it comes to connecting uh, everything to Wi-Fi. It's just a little easier. I like things being made easy for me. Um, so one thing to know um, for folks that have been um, have already connected this to the internet once um, and you're trying to reconnect say your internet went out or it unplugged or you lost power uh, and, it, and, it, and it bumped it from the internet um, just a, a quick tidbit of information for you guys is that you may be having issues with it trying to find your wand um, what I found is that you need to actually go into your Bluetooth settings on your phone and I did this through this exact reason so we can show you how to do this here Go into your Bluetooth settings and you'll notice that it shows a Hunter wand as a, as a device, but it's not connected. And what that's doing is that that's what's causing you to have issues with um, connecting it to the, the Bluetooth is because it's remembering a, uh, an old device, even though it's the same device, it's just having problems with being able to connect it. So you need to go in there and say, forget this device. And then you go back into HydroWise, and then you should be able to connect it pretty easily from there. Perfect. Now it's popped up a pairing number on the LCD of the controller. As you can see there, it's a six-digit number. You're going to want to just type that in. In this case, it's 4937210. Hit pair and it should pair and connect things once you're ready to hit scan. You're going to search for your Wi-Fi network. And then once you're there, you find the one that you want to look for, one you want to connect to here. <clears throat> I like to show the password so I can make sure that I'm typing it in correctly. There we go. Oops. Hit continue. And then you should see it start to connect to the internet. As you can see on the controller, it's popping up and saying offline. Interesting. There we go. Online. So from there, we're going to add a program. Okay. Now this is a uh, um, a lot of this is based off of the area you are in. So like if you're not in Texas, if you're up north, your start times, your run times, um, your soil type all might be different from what we have here in Texas. So just do some research on how long you should run them for. Ask a local irrigator, support your local businesses, um, call a guy out there, see if he can give you a run through on, you know, what the best times to run, the best times to start, how long each zone should run for, um, have him do a full check of your system and he'll get you an idea on what you should be setting your programs for or a quick Google search, uh, or YouTube. Um, you know, that's always a great way of looking into it, okay? So we're going to hit Add Program here. Once we add it to it, again, you can name your program whatever. Like in this case, I'm just going to name it Program, okay? Time-based and virtual solar sync are really based on what you have on your controller. Um, virtual solar sync, honestly, is like an older, in the way I see it, is a little bit older than... Uh, uh, you know, kind of older option that was used um, kind of in place of rain and free sensors kind of becoming obsolete, uh, at least for what we see. We don't see them very often over here in the uh, Texas area, but I'm sure there's contractors that like to use them. They have their benefits um, and they have their cons, right? Just as everything. Uh, but you need to know that if you have uh, virtual solar sync and you choose a time-based program type, it will not register and, and use your virtual solar sync the way it's designed to. So you need to be specific on what you're using. Now, we always install just a normal rain and freeze and not the virtual solar sync. So we use it on a, a time-based schedule. Again, your watering days here. This is another one where it kind of comes into knowing your area, knowing the requirements. Uh, it's really important for you to choose the right uh, watering days because at least in Texas, they stick to a two-day maximum of watering. Uh, and that's, you know, usually in the springtime um, or, you know, when we have water. Um, uh, but a lot of the times they will drop it down as well if you're uh, not paying attention to it just because of the amount of water that we have to supply. Uh, we want to try to conserve it. So just keep an eye on it with your municipality. 
they'll let you know what your watering days are, uh, at least in the state of Texas, right? So we'll just say that our days to water here are going to be just Wednesday and Saturday. And so all you're going to do is just select all the days to where they are no longer showing a blue dot over it. And those are going to turn off the days for watering there. Uh, you'll also be able to see that Wednesday and Saturday are still blue. That's just showing that it is watering for those days. Start times as well, same thing again, just depending on what you would like to do is more of a preference. Uh, you know, you can set it for 2 a.m., you can set it for, uh, you know, 7 p.m., 8 p.m., it really just depends. Uh, there's a lot of, um, you know, differing opinions out there, but it's really just kind of what you've been able to research. Uh, there's a lot of different options available for optimizing how much water is absorbed into the soil. So just check those things out. Do some research. Find the best start time for you. Again, if you're not 100% sure, you can always call an irrigator and they can give you a rundown on what they believe to be the best times for you. But it's all subjective. Um, well, I say that, but there is, there is information out there that will help you uh, getting a, a runtime set up. Zones and watering duration, again, we're just going to say for simple, sim, sim, simplistic purposes, we've just got one zone on this system, but that's how you'll add um, as many zones as you have on your controller or on your system. A quick way to know how many zones you have, what you'll do is if you go over to your controller, you can pull this little front face plate down and you'll see all of the wiring terminals here. Now, all systems have a common wire and all of them have a zone station wire, it, depending on your area. Again, I know Texas requires a master valve on all new systems. You may or may not have a master valve. That master valve does not get counted in your zone count, so just keep that in mind. If you've got one, two, three, four, five zones, that would not mean that I've got six. You do have six valves, but you do not have six zones. You only have five, okay? So just keep that in mind as you're kind of going through and uh, inputting your zone count there for you. But again, in this situation, we're just going to do one. Keep it easy. We're going to say we're going to run it for 10 minutes, okay? <clears throat> From there... You've got predictive watering. Again, I typically like to turn all these things off because all the systems that we install um, or the systems that we uh, work on, we really recommend that you have a rain and free sensor. So a rain and free sensor is going to do, in my opinion, a lot better than what they can do for uh, you know, your uh, seasonal schedule, your predictive watering aspect, uh, which will just basically use the forecast somewhere near you to turn off or turn on your system based on what it's, what it's showing in the forecast. Uh, but we just turn all those things off. So advanced settings, you've got uh, your monthly adjustments here or your seasonal schedule. Again, do some research in into this one as well to find out what you think is the best option. The best research is calling a uh, an irrigator. They can give you a ton of information uh, on seasonal schedules, etc., uh, to get you taken care of on uh, on what is the is the most optimal setting for that. Again, it's it's going to be based off your region uh, and the area that you're in because in Texas we've got two uh, seasons. Uh, one's you know we got about uh, say probably about nine months of uh, maybe even ten ten months of summer <laughs> and about two months of winter. So it's about how it works over here. So just keep those things in mind, but just make changes as you guys need to. Okay, back we're gonna hit back again. And then we're going to hit the add button up there at the top. And that's going to add your program to it. And you can see the program summary, you have added one program, right? That little button right there is just how you'll edit uh, your program if you need to. It'll take you right back into the screen and allow you to make changes. Just be sure to save your changes once you're done, okay? So we're going to hit continue. Uh, again, we're going to add a sensor just to show you how to do it. We'll just type in an RF for rain and free sensor. Again, the... Uh, the option usually is always going to be the normally closed wire option. Um, as you can see, the soil sensor is normally closed wire too, uh, but your rain sensor is usually not any more uh, a normally open wire system. There's very rare that you have. It's very old. If you've got a open wire system, it's a old sensor. I highly recommend just to replace it anyways, just to get it up to um, you know the uh, the standards of what they set them now. It's a lot better. Uh, for your controller input, make sure that you select the sensor slot here instead of having it not assigned. It's another quick way of your sensor not going to work um, if you're not careful. So just uh, make sure that it's assigned to a sensor slot. It's basically just picking up the wires uh, that are going to be in the front end of the controller. 
right? You've got a sensor slot right here. Again, it says SEN, so that's what it's picking up on your application there for you as well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit back. And then you want to make sure that you select the zones. We Again, in this case, we have one zone. But in your case, you may have eight. You may have 10. You might have 14. Um, but you need to make sure all of those zones are selected to work with the rain and free sensor. Hit back and hit add. And there you go. You just added your rain and freeze. Again, the option here, as you can see, it's got the little square with the pencil inside of it. We'll give you the option to edit that if you ever need to in the future. You can enable your location. You can enter a controller address. We already entered ours in there to it, so it's good to go. And then you are hitting go home. Now you can see the home screen slightly changed. You see that there is a green check mark here up in the top left corner. That's just showing that you are connected to the internet and that it is good to go and ready to water. Uh, a couple things to know um, as you're going through, you can obviously run manually through by just clicking the zone. You can add and change the pro, like add a picture. You can give you get just like general information as to like when it starts, uh, how long it's going to run for when it's starting. This is just the normal watering cycle. And of course, you can go over and see that it's going to start again on Saturday as well. So we've got one starting Wednesday, one starting Saturday. Okay, uh, you can suspend from here. So if you just hit suspend. You can actually say, I want to suspend immediately. Once you hit the suspend on the top right, as you can see, now it's got a little raindrop with a uh, slash through it. If you go back, you'll see that there as well. So it'll show that it is suspending that zone uh, temporarily. Um, give you some time to fix a head or repair a leak if you need to. We want to take that off there. You can also start it manually from there as well say i just want it to turn on hit that start button up there at the top right and it'll turn it on for you and start running the system it again just a quick way of manually starting uh, without changing anything on your programming again if you have that quick menu toolbar down here at the bottom you can select programs you can go back in there either add a program you can edit you can do all sorts of stuff from there same thing with the zones as well you can always go in there edit you can add pictures change the icon you can do a whole bunch of good stuff uh, within editing uh, that application there for you same thing for uh, quick runs right or manual runs just like choosing the zone yeah, but you can actually select multiple right if you've got like three or four zones that you want to run you can just select which ones you want to run hit start it's going to run it starting with the first zone or if you have like zones two five and six it's going to run two first then five then six and it'll run it for the time either that you've chosen for it to run for uh, or the chosen or the programmed time that it's set to run for. Same thing for starting a program. Again, pretty self-explanatory on that one. It's going to start and run the program that you have scheduled. Okay. Actions here, you've got, again, the same thing with suspending a zone. And then you've also got the option for the zone tester there as well. This option is really great um, if you want to just quickly walk the property and just run through each zone, check and make sure things are working like they should. There's not a time that you have to input for this one. It's just going to run it for like, I think like maybe five minutes max, but uh, this gives you some time to go through and check things out and then it will move to the next zone. It does that kind of as a fail safe. So you don't just turn it on and then forget about it. And then you're so that one zone's running for like four hours uh, and then just like totally drowning out the property. So it's good that they put that little fail safe on there. Other than that, that is pretty much it. Uh, you've got the forecast there at the bottom. You've also got the little uh, drop down menu over here, that little hamburger menu at the top left uh, that you can go through and find all of those uh, option settings that you have there uh, on your quick menu toolbar right there for you as well. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Really appreciate you guys supporting the channel. If you haven't already, please uh, smash that like button, hit that notification bell so you get notified on new videos that we're putting out. And then also be sure to comment on this video and let us know. We, we always accept critiques, um, but we also want to make sure that we know if there's something out there that you guys are having problems with, uh, we, we absolutely want to make a video to be able to address that problem and, and get you guys taken care of. So please drop a question in the, uh, in the comments below and we will answer that very quickly for you. Thank you guys so much and y'all enjoy the rest of your day.